Well, hello, C++ programmers. Bar Brian Malloy here, and what I'd like to do is give you a gentle introduction to C++ templates. Why we might want to use templates, how we use them, and the two models for using them, the inclusion model and the explicit instantiation model. So, I hope this isn't confusing because it should be a simple thing. So, there's only 18 slides. I'd like to try to keep this to 20 minutes. Wish me luck. Okay, first of all, let me start here. So there are two images here on the start page. The first image is a drawing tool that we used to use back when I was younger. You know, when there were pterodactyls flying on the earth and dinosaurs. We would use a tool like this to help us to draw a circle or a triangle or a square or any of these geometric constructs. So why do I have it on this page? I have it on this page because a template tool is, is, a, is a tool with, with geometric constructs with holes. And you can stick your pencil in the hole and draw the, the figure. And so uh, a C++ template class is not a class. It's a class with a hole. And typically you fill that hole with a type. So if you have a C++ template class, it's not a class yet. When you instantiate it at compile time with a type, it becomes a class. And then when you instantiate the class at runtime, it becomes an object. So in a certain sense, a C++ template is a compile time analogy to a runtime object. So I don't know if that makes sense to you, but anyway, so that's the first image. The second image is a book. The C++ templates, the complete guide is a gentle, fairly readable text about templates. If you want to learn about templates and you don't know a whole lot about them, there's the place to go. It's written by uh, David Vandevorty and uh, Nicholas Jesutis, a quintessentially readable textbook. So I'd encourage you to get that if you like templates. And if you love templates, you just love them, then there's the inscrutable Alexandrescu. This book will keep you in one place for a long, long time. I think I spent a month reading the first two chapters, and they were it's just chock full of, man, there are so many things you can do with templates. I, I was shocked at some of the things he could do with them. And so they are interesting. If you love templates, get that book. Uh, find yourself a nice uh, couch or somewhere packs uh, enough uh, food to last a couple of months and you might make it through the first couple of chapters. Good luck. Anyway, it's a good book really. Why do we want to use templates? Well, to avoid code clones because code clones are a maintenance problem. What's a code clone? It's where we repeat code. So we've got code here. This is the, the canonical three-step swap and, and, and whenever you want to swap numbers, here I'm swapping ins, here I'm swapping floats. The code's the same except for the type and that's a perfect example of, of when to use templates. And if you don't have templates, then where are you? Well, you got to use void star or macros and void star are very, they're fine when they work, when they don't work, they are so hard to debug. And macros are error prone. In fact, in the original book by Kernigan and Ritchie, the original C book, they mention in there how error prone they are. So here's a, here is a macro to find the max of two numbers. And so what I have here, you got to use parens all over the place because all kinds of dangerous precedences can happen depending upon what I pass into the macro. But essentially, I compare A to B. This is the ternary operator, uh, the ternary operator, question mark, colon. Uh, and so I pass, I pass two values in, one for A and one for B, and if A is greater than B, I return A, otherwise I return B. Here I'm finding the max of two ints, here I'm finding the max of two floats, and this will work, and I don't even want to tell you how many different ways I could screw that thing up, there are lots. Here is the templated counterpart of that. It's a template function called larger. I don't know why I called it larger. I actually have an example of this where I call it max. I don't know why. Larger is actually more grammatically correct. Anyway, we say, okay, here comes a function. It's a template function, and the, the type name that I'm going to use here is T. So the type is T. Type name's a reserved word that's real useful. Uh, we'll come to this in the next slide. I hope I can make sense of it, but essentially, Larger is going to work for any type T. Let me rephrase that. Larger is going to work for any type T 
for which the greater than operator is defined. So if you have ints, certainly you can compare two ints with greater than or floats. If you define your own class, say string, and you want to use this function, then you're going to have to overload the greater than operator for it to work. And there's the, temp, uh, the uh, ternary operator used again with the greater than. And here we don't need the parens because this is such a much safer function. <clears throat> here I'm finding the larger of two ints. Here I'm finding the larger of two floats. And the compiler can figure that out and go ahead and use this. So really what we're defining here is a family of functions. By family, I mean type type family, a family of types uh, that return the larger of two values and the type is a parameter. Okay, we're going to talk about how this can, th this is really an example of the inclusion model, but let me come back to that. Okay, so the keyword type, historically we used the word class, so you'd put class T, and the reason is that when you define a class, you're actually defining a type. And you use it as a type. If I define a class string, I'll say string A, string B, because it's like int A or int B. It's a type. You use it the same way. But uh, C++ uh, designers decided that we need a special name for types uh, to declare a type called type name. So rather than use class, either one will work. You can put class here or type name. The modern thing to do is type name, and sometimes you need it. This is a, a canonical example of the expression declaration ambiguity. And if I have time, I want to keep this to 20 minutes. I'll explain this in more depth. But essentially, I'm declaring a const iterator pose. And the compiler can get confused about whether or not this is a declaration or a um, expression. And by saying type name, I'm saying this is a declaration of a const iterator. I'll see if I have time to come back to that. The canonical class, temp templated class, is stack because the operations of push and pop, they're the same, just like the three-step swap. The only difference is the type. So here I have a, a top, a function top that re returns the top item. So by the way, so we're saying template, type name is, uh, the, ty the type I'm passing in here is capital T-Y-P-E. So everywhere you see capital T-Y-P-E here, we're going to have a type. So top is going to return the item at the top of the stack. So we need to, there's the type of it. Popping, you just throw the top thing away. And push, we're going to push X of type type. It's type, the type of X is type. And this is, I guess I'm calling this the enum hack. I'm not so sure this is exactly the enum hack, but it is using an enum as a hack. How? Well, I want to really declare a constant called empty. And the way to you, the, the, the uh, way we did that before you could actually do con make you can now declare a constant in a class but the old-fashioned way to do it was to use an enum because enums are really held constant and so my first enum I'm going to say start my enums off at minus one the default is to start an enum off at zero so that's a, a separate topic let's not go there so okay let's keep going so the canonical um, example of a class that should be templated as a stack because all the operations are the same um, except for the type. So why use templates? Because you can have a stack for ints, a stack for floats, and so forth. Okay, how do you use them? Well, there are two models for using them. Uh, the inclusion model and the explicit instantiation model. I guess a good question is why do you want two models? Well, the reason you might want two models is you might want the benefits of separate compilation. Let me see if I can motivate that. Um, here I have uh, a, an example that I'm going to try to explain to you. It's got a function. I called it larger in the slides. I'm calling it max here. But really what I have, let me compile this. Okay, so it's, it compiles it and it compiles main.cpp and max.cpp and then it links them together into a, a, an executable called run. Now, if I somehow change main.cpp, okay, so I touch it. Now, if I type make, the only file I have to recompile is, is uh, all of them. <laughs> Actually, what I want to... Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have to recompile max. I only have to recompile main and then the linker will relink the old max because that hasn't changed. 
Okay, so this is an example of set the benefits of separate compilation. They're not very big benefits here because I've only got two classes, but if you have nine classes or 13 classes and you only change one, you may be able to get away with only um, recompiling one file and linking them all again. Now notice when I link, I'm using the old max.o. But that's okay because I haven't changed max. When I did my touch of main, I was pretending I only uh, changed main. So when I did touch main.cpp right there, now when I recompile, I don't have to recompile max.cpp uh, max like I did here because I didn't change it. So I get the benefits of separate compilation, the benefit of using a make file. Now, that's why some people favor the explicit instantiation model. However, the inclusion model is so much easier to use that, to be honest with you, almost everyone uses the inclusion model. And the standard C++ library is an example of, of the use of the inclusion model. So what's the difference? Well, when you use separate compilation, you, you separately compile this translation unit, you separately compile this translation unit. And what if they both use a stack uh, and let's suppose they both use a stack of ints. If they both use a stack of ints, this file, this translation unit, will be compiled separately from this one. And the compiler doesn't know that this one's using a stack of ints and this one's using a stack of ints. It's the linker that really tries to link them. But I only need one stack of ints. I don't want to make two of them. So if I have a class stack, I want to instantiate only one uh, type of int, one one in, I only want to instantiate the class once for ints. Well, how do I do that? Well, with separate compilation, I have to manually tell it to do that. So um, what I'm doing here, I'm saying, okay, I'm de going to declare an STK of ints. Here it's a my STK of ints, but I only want one of them. So I manually tell the compiler manually, I'm going to do it in the .cpp for class stack, manually create a stack of ints. A manual no no not manually create it, but I'm manually telling it to create a stack of ints, and so it does it. And I'm going to show you an example of that. So hang on. Um, here is the inclusion model, and so I'm bouncing around here. That's the problem with these. So here I'm using a class. Here I have a function. So let me just stick with the function, and we'll go back to the class. So let's stick with the function example for for a while. This is the inclusion model. Why? Well, because I'm including the definition of function larger um, with the, uh, the, the prototype, the signature, all together in one file. So here when I call larger, I have everything right here, and the compiler will say, okay, he wants it for ints, I'll make one for ints, here I'll make one for floats, and since it's one single compilation unit, the compiler can handle the fact that it only wants one stack of, one larger for ints. So if I had larger 6, 8, larger 5, 7, I'd only instantiate this once and call it twice. So in this example, I have to instantiate larger uh, for ints, and I also have to instantiate it for floats, and I'll mangle those names so that the, they look different. Okay, but if I were getting, too bad, I should have made these both be ints, I guess, because then it would only do it once. Now, what if I, that's if it's all included in one file. What if I want separate compilation? With separate compilation, you'll have a larger .h and a larger .cpp, and then a larger .h, you'll do the, 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 the function uh, prototype and then the .cpp you'll put the function definition. However, I'll get a link error. Do you believe me? Probably not, so let me just show you. So let me make this clean and let me just show you what I have in main. So in main.cpp um, I have uh, the function prototype here. Why do I have that there when I have that? I don't need that. Why is that there? Let me just get rid of it. Let me see if this still works. I don't know why that was there. Let me make it, and it works. I don't know what that was doing there. Let me just go back in here. Um, sorry. So I have main, and I'm including max.h, and uh, I'm going to use max uh, find. I'm going to use max.h to find the max of six comma eight. So let me just leave this here, and now let me get max.h, which is here. 
And then I'm going to split this screen and find max.cpp. Okay, now I hope this doesn't confuse you. So here's what I have. This is max.cpp. This is max.h. Okay, now I hope you're not confused. Here's main. Okay, so what do I have in main? I bring in max.h, the typical thing we do with separate compilation. And I'm going to use func function max with ints. So what do I have to do? In max.h, uh, ma this is max.h. I hope you can tell that. How do I know? Because there it says max.h. And in here I declare a templated function called max, and I just put the function uh, prototype. This is the prototype. Here I define function max. Here's the whole function definition. So there's the prototype. There's the body of the function. However, I have to manually tell the compiler instantiate max for ints because I'm going to use it for ints. And if I manually tell the compiler to do that, if I type make, it will make. Now let me make clean. And let me clear the, the screen here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out. Okay, and if I comment that out, then what you'll see is I'm going to get a link error. This will compile. So, but if I type make, so there it compiled. I compiled main.cpp separately. I compiled max.cpp separately. But when I tried to link these together to produce an executable called run, the linker, this is coming from the linker. The linker said, no way, there's an undefined reference to this. Why? Because it doesn't manually, it's not going to instantiate max for you because you're using the separate inclusion model. If I included this whole thing in main, I wouldn't have a problem. So how do I manually tell it to do that? I get rid of this and I get rid of that. And now if I save this, if I type make, it already compiled. All I need to do is link it. Okay, and it linked it, it runs. So if I run this, I get the larger uh, is 8. Is that true? The larger 6 and 8 is 8. Okay, so now I know that seems weird. How can I avoid the separate inclusion or this manual instantiation? Take this function and include it in here. If I do that, I lose the benefit of separate compilation. Because what? The way this is now, uh, this is what I got. If I touch main.cpp and I type make, oh, wait, touch main.cpp and then I type make, all I have to do is recompile main and link them together. So I get the benefits of separate compilation. However, um, I have to do that manual instantiation. So that's what this is all about. And how do I do it for stacks? So there it is. That's all I'm trying to say in these slides. I don't know if it's helping or hurting, um, but I'm just talking. But you have to explicitly instantiate it for every type you want. So here I have to explicitly instantiate it for ints, which I'm doing there. But I also have to manually instantiate it for doubles, which I'm doing here. So you have to do it for every type you want. Okay, and if I have a class stack, I'll have to manually instantiate it. I've always put it in the .cpp. So here, I want to, if I want it for both ints and floats, I have to tell the compiler to do it for ints and floats. So let's look at the trade-offs, and then we'll look at an example. The inclu inclusion model. The disadvantage is the increased compilation times. And for large programs, that can be significant, by the way. Uh, there is an instructor, Dr. Tessendorf. He writes a lot of templates. Uh, template classes and boy the separate compilation is a big issue in that case. The advantage of the inclusion model is I don't have to worry about various instances. To be honest with you, I favor the inclusion model. But I think we ought to understand both of them and, and for that reason the, it's, it's, in, uh, it's, it's favored. So let me just get out of these slides and show you an example. So here I try to show you it with a function. I have another example already for you here. Um, in, the, in the basic animation example, um, I use the explicit instantiation model in IOManager.h. So IOManager.h is an example of a class that has a template function. And that template function is print message value at. And value is templated by t. So I'm, this is a function that is um, templated. And the, the, I'm templating this value to be any type. So right now I said I'm using the explicit instantiation model. So what I'm telling you then is that in IO, 
sorry, iomanager.cpp, I have to instantiate print message value add for every type that I think I might ever need in the in the program. So here I'm instantiating for uh, excuse me, 16-bit int. Um, why am I doing it twice? Oh, for for a long, for a float, for an unsigned, and for an int. There's where that's the value that I'm templating. So I'm instantiating it manually for unsigned long, float, unsigned int. That's really unsigned int. I don't know why I didn't put it. And that's an int, which is different from an unsigned int. Now, if I happen to use a double, I'm in trouble because it's probably not going to work for this. And I have to put these lines in there for int. Suppose I want to say, I'm too bored with this. I don't want to do this anymore. What do I do? Well, I simply type the function. So see, what I've done is I've put the function here. There's print message value at. There's value of type T, and here's those parameters. If I don't want to do this, what do I have to do? Well, I want to get rid of these, okay, because that's too boring. And what do I have to do with this? I have to move that into the header. So I'm going to copy it. So there I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to look in the imomanager.h. And what I'm going to do here is, let me just see if I can actually do it. I hope you can see this. Instead of just putting the function signature right here, I'm going to put I'm going to put the whole function. Okay? So there it is. So there's the whole function. Let's see, did I get it in there? No. Let me let me cursor in. One, two, cursor in. You know I hate to be sloppy. Uh, let's get this one in. Okay, so cursor that in. And let's see, am I okay here? Yes except I don't need that. Okay, so this should fly now. So I save that, and then I want to get rid of this. I don't need this anymore because it's all in the header file. Implicit, the, the inclusion model means you include it in the header. Now if I type make, it works. Everything works, and I don't have to worry about instantiating it. So what did I do? In iomanager.h, I actually defined the function in the header. Now, I mean, it seems like a bad idea because it's such a long function, but I'm, so there's the declaration to there, and here's the rest of it. Here's the function definition. I put both the declaration and the definition of the function in the iomanager.h, and I put nothing for that function in .cpp, so it is gone. Okay, so I erased it from there, and now it will it will compile and it will run. So here's where I get this little example. That doesn't look so good. Um, so what I've tried to do is explicate the two models, uh, the inclusion model and the explicit instantiation model. Um, most people favor the inclusion model because you don't have to worry about. Uh, like for example, if I let me just show you what I'm getting at here. Let me check out. Uh, iomanager.h and check out iomanager.cpp and let me go into iomanager.cpp and let me come down here and let me not instant, let me hope that I can get, okay, suppose I do that. Let me see if this will still make now. Darn it, it makes. Let me get rid of another one. Oh, I bet I st it'll still make. I hate that. Uh, it actually, it'll still make, but I want, let's see, let me get rid of this one. Okay, am I using this at all? I might not be using, oh, I'm not using these. I'm not using IO Manager in this example. That That's, and if you run it, you see, yeah, there's nothing being printed at the screen. So as long as I don't use it for any, let's, uh, for any particular types, I'm okay. But as soon as I try to use it, so I got rid of those manual instantiations. Let's go into manager.cpp and see if I can use IO Manager somewhere in here. Um, let's do an, Oh, uh, something dumb down here in play. Let's do, uh, uh, where's IO manager? I'm dragging this out. I'm sorry. Where's IO manager? Do I have IO? Yeah, there's IO. So let me just put um, right here in the event loop. I'll put, no, 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 not here. Let's go into the draw. Where's draw? Where's my draw? Here's my draw. I'll draw the, the that, and then I'll say IO, IO dot, um, or is it an arrow? IO arrow print message value at 
my message is value and let me give it a value okay and I'm hoping that this will compile and not link so let me try it it compiles um, I uh, print message value at what is the signature IO manager dot eight print message value at uh, print message value I need a string oh I have to tell it where I have to tell it where okay so let me come in here and tell it where let's put it at 10 comma 10 now I'm hoping this will compile not link okay so let me make it there see it compiled and that's a link error see that's a link error right there okay it compiled and couldn't link because it needs to be manually instantiated for ints it's telling me nobody instantiated this for ints so how do you avoid that? Either manually instantiate it in there for ints, uh, or um, use the uh, implicit uh, implicit model. So okay, I hope this helps. Brian Malloy, over and out.